with this experiment, I'm trying to make a non-metallic metal that looks like brass. I think this will have a very desaturated look, almost like something out of a Sunday morning newspaper comic. Adam Savage said the difference between science and screwing around is whether or not you write it down. So I'm recording this in case somebody wants to try it again, and that means I'm not just screwing around. This is the piece I'm working with. It's an objective marker that I made from leftover Ogren bits. It has several pieces of brass, but I'm going to start. I'm going to do just the ripper gun shells, so just those little shells in this clip here. This is a very pixelated image of what the Ogrens are expected to look like. From this image, I can sort of see what the brass should maybe look like when it is done. So to achieve the effect I see here, especially on this foremost of them, I'm going to do a brown layer over the underpainted shell, then a yellow glaze over the whole brown layer, before finally a darker, more thicker yellow just in the middle along the contours of the shell. Dana Howell's video there would be the go-to resource for underpainting, in my opinion. So I'm not going to repeat that. The first paint I used was charred brown. I did a base coat with this. I did it rather thin, and yeah, I was happy with that. After that, I used heavy gold brown. This is sort of my new favorite paint, even if it gets really thick really quickly. Then I cracked open a brand new bottle of gold yellow. I've never used gold yellow before. Um, and for the highlights, I mixed my the faithful dead white with the gold yellow in varying amounts to get a much paler tone. This always surprises me that I can't just put a thin layer of white on. I have to mix it up. Now to bring it back down in several areas, I ended up using brown ink for recess shading around and between the cartridges, the ripper gun shells, and because I made some mistakes, I used a thin or several thin layers of black, black paint, 051, to re-emphasize what was and wasn't supposed to be brightly colored. After that, I went back and again used uh, used the used the dead white, used 001, and I did a lot of edge highlighting around the areas I wasn't actually painting. It came out quite lovely. This is my wet palette. I made it according to Marco, not just Mecca's instructions, but. I used a quarter sponge from a Star Wet refill pack, and on top of that, I put fragments of Star Wet sponges, uh, Star Wet paper, like this. Also, it's incredibly hard to see if it's level or not when you're holding it up to the camera like this. So, so let's let's put it down. This is my venerable bottle of charred brown. It is so old that the label rubbed off and I had to make a new one based on numbers that I have since covered up that were on the back, which let me know what paint it was. It's curiously glossy, which is unfortunate, but it behaved this time. Vallejo, I think, is primary, primarily a scale modeling and airbrush paint company, which means their paints tend to be much more or more finely ground than other miniature brands. 
This means that if they're sitting on a shop shelf for more than a few days, they separate. So, you can imagine, they need to be shaken. They need to be shaken quite a bit. I'm currently using pieces of hobby sprue as agitators in the bottle, and an electric shaker, an electric shaker made from a jigsaw and a speed clamp. So the paint itself is paint. Oh, look at him go. And I want to just sort of coax it into being. Let's see if another light helps. Ooh, that doesn't. I want it to be this sort of watercolory stain for what I'm doing. And I'm only going to do the one hardest to see shell at first. And I'm probably going to keep forgetting to put it in front of the camera. And it's going on, it's not going on very thick, which is it's not running, which is good. It's not going on at all thick, so I'll go to a less watery part. So here it's not quite as not quite as uh, runny. Just getting this. I'm just getting this lovely little tiny little area. Incredibly tiny little area. And I think I'm happy with that. So that's the brown. So now I'm going to get the. Which one? So now I'm going to get the heavy. Well, that's the brown. This is Vallejo's extra opaque game color heavy gold brown. It will be the first color over the brown. It will be the first layer color. Paradoxically, the extra opaque range was designed to compete with games well compete or replace games workshops foundation range and games workshops foundation range and games workshops base colors are sort of the same i think the idea was that they would be extra opaque and they would give good coverage as the first layer over primer meaning they were less suitable for layering since you can't see what's on them, under them. But all that really means for me is I can dilute it a bit more. It's the most fabulous yellow I've ever used because it actually works, even if it's thicker and needs to be <laughs> shaken. That thing is really loud. All right, so there's a puddle on the palette. And some areas that didn't actually seep through, so... I was gonna say, there's a puddle on the palette here, so I'm gonna put it here, but it looks like the puddly bits are the only bits where the water's broken the surface tension and gone through the paper, so I'm actually gonna put it on a puddle. So the fun thing about the wet palette even though these streaky bits on the outside have sort of dried, the main blob of paint up here has dry, hasn't has dried. As anyone who's used to working with acrylics will tell you, they are great in terms of safety, in terms of cost, but they dry. They dry really, 
really fast. And that's sort of one of the big tedious bits of doing anything interesting with them. So the wet palette means that they're unable to, well, that they can, that they don't dry. They don't dry quite as bad. They don't try, dry quite as severely. I'm going to be able to come back to this once I'm satisfied with what I'm doing and do it again and um, do, the, do the rest of the bronze things. So right now I'm using some moisture that's already on the palette to kind of work up a streaky thin layer and I think I'm happy with it. And this is dry. This is way shinier than I expect it to be. It's, the camera's not really picking it up, but the brown is dried with an almost... It's, it was glossy the last time I used it, but now it's a bit satiny, so that's worrying. Because I don't think I want a satin finish. And so my plan is to just sort of... smear this yellow all over there and I think I put it on too thick ah! so just sort of well wash I guess wash with the heavy gold brown so it gets into the recesses and I've dried the I have got to work out how to do this. So you can sort of see that it's pooling. Oh, there we go. No, wait. Uh, <clears throat> I got to work out how to use cameras. It's sort of pooling. And I'm just going to try and steal away. Okay. So this hasn't actually worked. I don't know how obvious it is. With something so small and so poorly lit. But the color hasn't quite worked out. All right, so like I said, the color hasn't quite worked out. It's it's way, way too thin. So I'm going to try a thicker coat just along the sort of ridgy surface of this thing. And I've got to get the... I don't even know what it's called, the little lip thing at the back of the bullet, at the back of the case, casing, sorry. I, I know that Ogren Ripper guns are giant automatic shotguns because, because somebody thought that sounded cool when they were writing the, the, the fluff for the Ogrens. And I think, actually, I think it worked this time. So I've got brown down in the recesses. And this sort of mustardy yellow very thinly over everything. I'm gonna try just a little bit more on the on the butt of the cartridge. Maybe of the, of the shell, sorry, not a cartridge. Well maybe it is a cartridge. On whatever whatever it is. Okay, so this isn't amazing. It's way too mustardy. But adding it little by little, pushing it around, I think I think I gotta get better at checking the screen. I think I'm ready for to move on to the to the third bit which will be another yellow. This time it'll be gold yellow. I'm not gonna show, uh, where is it? I'm not gonna show myself for shaking this. Do, 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 do. The camera's at like one angle. Oh, it's, it's 72007 gold yellow. The first number in fillet, the first, oh, wait, I know what it'll work. There we go. Ah! Okay, so the first thing here is usually the packaging for the Vallejo color, 
and then this is the is the actual color so with their surface primer if this said this says 74602 there's also i think a 72602 which is this in this size bottle and there's also a 74601 i think and a 74 72601 which are a glossy surface primer this is the matte surface primer because i don't want glossy because glossy doesn't provide as much tooth to the paint and the paint goes everywhere and the paint runs off so aside it turns out i've never actually used this paint i didn't realize it which means the shaking's rubbing the label off that's the one other that's another thing that a problem i've had with Vallejo. that's the biggest problem i think i've had with vallejo paints so i'm cutting up this mortal realms brew that I've got in a shop because I'm in Britain and I'm going to use it as agitators. You, for years I've been using some little metal ball bearings and aquarium stones but one of those is leaving these weird brown marks on the bottom of my paints and I've only noticed it now. I think the best thing to do would be a completely stainless steel uh, nut not a ball bearing but a nut since the edges of that means it can't get caught in the in the nozzle the second best i think is the is the definitely the glass beads followed by steel beads and i and this what i'm doing now has no place in the pecking order i just described anyway agitators aside this is going to be the very small drop of this stuff. I never, I don't think I've ever actually run out of paint, out of a paint. I burst a bottle of bolt gun paint. Uh, I had a bottle of bolt gun gray or bolt gun silver paint that I popped by accident and got all over my face. But other than that, I don't think I've ever run out of paint. What I have had happen is I've had the paints dry out which is why I advocate for drop using dropper bottles. Oh, this this light that I'm using now is much better than the light that I have the camera mounted on, so we're doing that. So yeah, I'm just going to go around the edges very lightly. And this is not looking good at all. But that might be down to the shape. So that's 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 about it. This there's a noticeable difference in this to me. I don't know if it's noticeable on camera. And now I'm going to try white. Or I'm gonna try white and this just deliciously saturated yellow. This is Vallejo Dead, uh, Vallejo Game Color Dead White, which doesn't have any of the dot, possibly rusting ball bearing that I mentioned. I think that's because this is a super new paint that I've only opened in the last few months. My previous bottle was um, a Citadel paint that I'd transferred to a dropper bottle. And it was getting weird yellow residue at the top. Which I'm sure wasn't from me accidentally mixing. No, no, no. I'm a good boy. Okay, so I'm going to try and get the palette. Taking bits and blending them to try and make a very pale yellow. And then that I'm just going to put in a streak. And then at the very end, at the very edge of the thing. And it's looking way too thick after one little fleck. So I'm drying it off the brush. I promise this is way more fun when I'm not trying to narrate it. And it's actually relaxing. 
Can I have a whatever the hell movie this is playing? I can have the cave playing. I could have the cave playing, but if I played it now, YouTube's copyrights might catch me. Ah. Yeah, YouTube and the copyright. So yeah, I uh hmm. I'm not uh I gotta do the butt of the thing as well. I have to do something on the butt. Can you see that I'm trying to do something on the butt? Yes, and you can probably see Oh, that's what I did wrong. Okay, so the butt paint the grip, I'm gonna call it, of the of the shell has been painted. And the the paint also got onto this casing, uh, block, cartridge, magazine, whatever. So I'm gonna fix that with some black later. But I think that's why it looks so weirdly shaped when I look up at, at it on the camera. But that's a flat surface, and flat surfaces are easy, aren't they? Okay, so yeah, this is probably taken about 20 times as long, because and so much of it was not actually painting; it was just I'm uh, it was just me making recordings. But I I think I'm happy with that almost. I think the darks could be a bit darker, but this slow blending up and leaving a lot of exposed areas might just be what everyone's always been saying to do. Um, when I'm wiping the brush off here, I'm wiping it onto a very damp spot on the towel with the suspicion that that will take off less paint than a dry spot and the paint will still be moist and slippery and it will come away. Come sail away, come sail away, come sail away with me. Okay, so I'm not going to win an award with this. But I'm going to say it works. I, I absolutely hate metallic paints. And this might be how I get away from them. So I'm going to do all this again for this top area which seems to have a single well sorry two cartridges in it and after I've done that I will come back and show the results which will be seamless because I'm recording and pausing so now I'm working on the second area the second set of these I've done the base coat with the thinned charred brown and then I've done a layer of heavy gold brown, and it's already glowing, and by Scott's licked brushes, why isn't it focusing? Speaking of brushes, I switched from just the regiment-sized brush to the character-sized brush. This is a smaller army painter brush. Smaller brushes dry out quicker and don't hold as much paint, so I'm not fond of using them, but this did make getting into those clip uh, little nudges on the edge of the clips much easier. All right, let's continue with the first highlight of gold yellow. Here's another layer. It's rather messy. I am going to use that brown ink I showed off earlier to try and do recess shading once it's dry. The gold, the, the brighter yellow, I think, is sort of on the, on the top, which might make the effect look right. I guess we'll see. I'm giving this a long time to dry, just because. So, I'm reasonably confident that this is all dry now, and, uh, yeah. Hands are shaky as hell. Okay, so I'm not doing the hourglass, because I just screwed that up. 
I am doing just a sort of across the top of the thing and at the edges and at the edges across the top and at the edges and this is kind of almost a one one mix of the gold yellow Ooh, popped a bubble he's not yeah you can see that oh but you can't see me mixing so it's just about a one one mix of my of my white and my and my yellow and uh, hands are shaky because I'm tired okay so because this is such delicate oh Oh, uh, because this is such delicate work, I'm now going to pause the video and let this dry before I do one more coat, which will be mostly white. And for that, I'm 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 gonna stick to my new plan, which I'm voicing now of just doing it on the edges of the brass. That is not focused at all in here. I've got to learn how to make the cam control the focus myself. Before I get the last shiniest of layers on, I'm going to do the, excuse me, the washing, which will involve very little layers, very thin layers of brown just in the cracks. Could have gone with black. Brown feels a bit more of a safe bet. And it's 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 making that distinctive again, yeah. Probably shouldn't be using a wet palette for washes, but yeah, whatever. And I've done a bit too much there, but that should be fine. So again, now that that's there to drag the that's um yeah oh little little that should make the cracks more obvious. So the last step in this, in the gold part of this, in the brass part of this, not gold, brass, is this second highlight to bring just the bits that I want highlighted back up now that I've brought the recesses down with the last recess shading. It's at this point I've gone through the videos and realized I have done things out of order. Uh, so, yeah, you know what, this is probably the wrong brush for this. And the light that the camera picks up is alarmingly different from the light that I see. Uh, I want the almost there. I want the bigger casing, the sorry, the bottom casing that has more. I want a little bit more of a highlight on it. And then I go to putting oh, I want a little more highlight here. And then I'm and then I'm done. And then I'm done. I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it. I'm gonna get out the the black paint to touch up around the around the edges here ah come into focus yeah so i gotta learn to focus and i gotta learn to use lights Ugh. no one's ever gonna watch this anyway how do i get this up? 
It doesn't look amazing, but it does look a lot better in real life. Just my game color black. Just a tiny little... Ooh! That's... It sputtered. Can't see it, but it sputtered. Get a little skip and the sputter everywhere. Um, doesn't really matter, but it was unexpected. And as I've... This has taken... Anyway, so I'm trying to get... What's the... Yeah, that's not actually great coverage. Anyway, so I want to see if I can just... Uh... Okay, so I want to see if I can just get in on the edge of this and cover up some of the... overzealousness without actually messing up my beautiful casings. This should be particularly relevant. Oh, that was terrible. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but as I was watch as I was moving the model and watching it on the camera, I hit my hand. I hit the brush. Anyway, um, okay, so I'm going to need two layers of cleanup. One for this black, and then another layer to redo the, sort of recreate the highlight that was previously on the edge of this. So these tiny, tiny, thin layers of uh, sorry, it's tiny, tiny, thin layers of black again and again to try and reintroduce the edge of the uh, edge of the edges of this thing. It is coming out much darker than everything around it. So I'm... I mean, I'm just going to paint the whole sort of recess of this. Try and make it look consistent. I like to think of myself as a bulk sort of batch painter. I'm starting to think I might enjoy this sort of thing more. Okay, so that's the inside of it shaded down to black. That has a or repainted to black. That has a really nice contrast with the outer casing of the magazine clip box and because of the nature of this i don't think i need need to wait for it to dry so i'm just going to try and edge highlight with white so i'm just going to try and get the paint on the edge of the brush and it's going to end up on the tip as well. Okay, so plan B, I'm going to get it on the edge and then try to squirrel it off. Or I'm going to get it on the edge of the tip and then try to get it off the tip. Try and get this to stay in focus. That is a really coarse highlight. I 
I should have gone for something a little bit thinner. Man, I really hope this... Don't screw up, don't screw up, don't screw up. I don't know what I was hoping for. Actually, this is looking kind of nice. Can anyone see this? Okay, this is looking crazy good. I'm feeling inspired. I'm feeling emboldened. I'm going to do all the edges with this little bit of white. I think I've actually done edge highlighting on a finished piece before because I don't think anything I've worked on since just working out how to do the technique has had an edge like this. That that wasn't that last stroke wasn't a stroke of brilliance. And and Okay, missed a little bit there. That's okay. That's okay. It's a wet palette. I can grab the black in a moment. Yeah, I'm, I was going to enter the... This, despite the apparent age, I am a full-time student and was intending to enter a student's painting competition. I might find a more serious one if I can find the time for this stuff. So, yeah, there's my sort of... Yeah. Forgot the bit in the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to switch off the camera and do some more do another do another round on the bottom on the bottom casing bottom shell whatever as well as clean up the bit here that i've noticed that i that i missed so it is really hard to tell here but the edge highlights look great i added some yellow to the flying skull and winged skull and that's that's good i'm i didn't think this was gonna work but i thought i had to do it anyway hey it worked so yeah that's technically given the time i didn't finish this in one day but eh I would have finished it in one day if I was not recording, we'll say. So, that was me live learning a non-metallic metal approach. I've still got everything from Age of Sigmar to finish. A large amount of Blackstone Fortress and my PhD. Oh, Dear gods, my PhD, I have to finish as well. If you can do better, I'd love to see how. If you try this and get a different result, that would interest me too. Otherwise, the usual social media 
engagement actions would um, be a strong motivation to make more videos, probably.